best part of all is seeing people's faces again. I agree. Good morning, everybody. We're going to give it just another minute or two here in case there are folks who are still joining us. But uh, my name is Erica. I'm the adult services provider here at Central Library in the Science and Technology Room. And here in just a minute, I will turn the microphone over to Ms. Mary Hammer from the St. Louis Herb Society. Um, so give us just another minute as we wait to see if anyone else is coming. Well, I think that was one of the longest minutes ever. All right, so good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Once again, my name is Erica, and I am the adult services provider here in uh, the Science and Technology Room at Central Library. Joining us today is Ms. Mary Hammer of the St. Louis Herb Society, and she is going to present a really fantastic program about lavender. And before I turn the microphone over to her, I just want to go over a couple of things right quick. Please keep your microphone muted so there's no background noise. This will be recorded, so if you miss any part of it because you have to step away, no fears, it'll be up on the library's uh, YouTube page probably within the week. Also, if you have a question for Ms. Mary, please use the chat feature at the bottom of your screen, type in the message, and make sure you type it to everyone because it's possible you have the same question as someone else. And Mary will answer as many as she can uh, at the end of the program. But don't be shy, ask away. All right, Ms. Mary Hammer, take it away, ma'am. Okay, thanks, Erica. Um, yeah, that, uh, that was a lovely introduction. Yes, don't be afraid to ask questions. I was telling Erica that I started I developed this program because when we had our herb sale, so many people had so many questions about growing lavender. And my response was, it's always, it's a little tricky to grow lavender here, but that's only in comparison to other herbs because other herbs are so easy to grow. So I'm gonna share my screen now and Erica, please let everybody in as they come. That's not a problem. And We'll just go ahead and get started here with lavender. So we love lavender. I love lavender. And as you can see, this photograph behind me is lavender at my house. Not right yet, but hopefully in another month. And I don't know what will have happened to it over the with the snow and so forth, but I left it uncovered. It's not blooming yet. So we hope for the best. That's what a gardener does, have optimism. I wanna tell you a little bit about the St. Louis Herb Society before we get started. We're celebrating our 80th anniversary this year and our purpose is to further the study use and knowledge of herbs. And our definition of herb is very broad. It's a plant with a use, any useful plant. So that pretty much covers everything. We maintain the herb garden at Missouri Botanical Garden located behind the Henry Shaw House down there. Hope Hopefully you'll be able to visit us working this year. We were not able to get into our garden for a whole year. So uh, it, needs some, it needs some of our loving attention, but it's still doing fine. And we have classes in the spring and fall. We have one more upcoming class in May. I'll give you that information in a minute. With when we do in-person classes, we always have a lovely food spread. The, this picture was of a Zatar workshop that we did. And then just some interesting decoration ideas too. 
we organized and run the annual spring herb sale at the garden. That sale was all virtual this year and is over. There's still just all we have to do is pick up our plants. And we give presentations just like this one and talks about herbs. Uh, we have a little program called Urban Heirloom Tuesday. And we don't know yet whether we're gonna be allowed to do that this year or not, but we shall see. That would be on Tuesday mornings from 10 till noon. We give away a free herb plant every week to the first hundred visitors. So lavender, lavender is a huge family. It's part of the mint family, which is huge with well over 3,500 members in the, la in the mint family alone. Uh, you may not realize that mint you may not have realized that mint was related to lavender. Mint is also related to basil and many, many other plants too. Lavender is a perennial. That means it comes back year after year if it's in its right spot. A uh, bushy shrub. And these are just some various lavenders. The flowers can come in almost every color. I did not realize that there was yellow lavender and of course pink and white as well as the more common lavender color. Many are hardy to zone five and we're in zone six. So most lavender is hardy here. That means it will withstand our winters. It's been in use for over 3000 years and the word lavandula stems from the Latin word to wash or livendula, bluish or livid. The old word lavandre means to launder. And in medieval and Renaissance France, women who took in washing were known as lavenders. They would rinse their clothing in lavender water and lay them to dry on lavender bushes. This made the clothing smell sweet, but it also protected the clothes from insect damage because lavender is a natural insect repellent. Lavender oil was used in Egypt, in ancient Egypt for perfume and mummification, in fact, it's said that when King Tut's tomb was opened, a faint whiff of lavender was detected. So that pretty long lasting scent. Roman soldiers carried lavender oil with them in battle to clean their wounds. Again, not only is it, uh, does it, is it an anti-insect, but it's an antiseptic as well. And the Romans also used for bathing, cooking, and just scenting the air. Lavender was also added to liquids used in the process of tanning leather. And as a result, the tanners did not get the plague as often as many other groups of people. They didn't know why they thought it might be witchcraft, but the actual reason was because lavender repelled the fleas that carried the disease. Also lavender is used to prevent infection. The glove makers who were licensed to perfume their products with lavender, that was interesting to me. I never really thought about having my gloves being perfumed, but often escaped cholera. And it's been popular really since the beginning of time. So Queen Elizabeth I required lavender conserve or jelly be served at the royal table and wanted fresh lavender flowers every day. So her greenhouses must have been busy. Queen Victoria loved lavender as well and even had a purveyor of lavender essence. During her reign, the products made from lavender became so well known all over that Lavendula angustifolia is known now as English lavender. However, all lavender is native to the Mediterranean region. No lavender is native to England, although it's grown in some parts of England. So that was interesting to me. I've mentioned a few of the qualities. It's antiseptic and a deodorizer. You can make your own little carpet cleaner with lavender. It's soothing and calming. It's a disinfectant. Its fragrance is very long lasting. In fact, the leaves and flower, uh, flowers of lavender hold their scent, well, for centuries. An infusion of lavender oil with uh, uh, water can it calm the itch of an insect bite? And as I've said, it's a natural insect repellent deterring gnats, mosquitoes, fleas, and clothing moths, among others. 
the deer don't bother it, the rabbits don't bother it, and it's tolerant of drought. What more can you want from the plant? As I say, flowers and leaves hold their scent and color long after they're dried. I'll show you a picture later on of 10 year old lavender. Essential oil made from lavender is one of the top aromatherapy oils, relieving stress and anxiety and can be very calming before sleep. So you'll find sleep masks and all kinds of products. If you want to mix your own little sunburn soother, you can mix a couple drops of essential oil with distilled water and spritz it on your skin to ease the sunburn or irritated skin or insect bites. If you want your hair to smell nice, rub a few drops between your palms and just rub it in your hair. I always walk out the door, I have some lavender outside my back door and I grab a few leaves of lavender and rub it on my shirt and rub it on my hat brim and then stick the stick the sprig inside my hat and then I'm not bothered by mosquitoes while I'm out in the garden. Dozens and dozens and dozens of products are available with lavender. And these are just three of them. Here we have candles, soaps, sprays, dryer sheets, shampoo, the list goes on and on. Now, if you want to grow lavender, it has some fairly uh, strict needs the the most well there's two most important factors for success with lavender first you want full sun that means out no shade out in the sun all day six to eight hours but the main thing is excellent drainage i'm going to talk about that a little a lot more as we go along the alkaline soil ph number this is something that i don't pay much attention to honestly because my soil mixture is, is very balanced. It also needs good air circulation and space to grow one little plant. This is one plant. This is another plant. So you can see that they take up some room. They need good air circulation. The other thing that's good about is a little unusual for lavender is we're used to mulching here to with, to hold moisture in the soil. Lavender will not do well if you use organic mulch. You can use a rock mulch. I don't use any mulch at all. Now, excellent drainage. Lavender hates what we call wet feet. This is a problem in the Midwest because our soil, especially during the winter, is cold and wet. You need to dig a hole wide, especially wide and sort of deep. And then you need a very well composted, loose, crumbly soil, or you can add some sand or even better, there's a product that you can find at various nurseries called Turfus. It's almost like little, well, I don't know what, what it is made of. It's just a little thing that aerates the soil, keeps the soil very loose and free. You can line your hole with little round stones if you want to, but you dig it deep. Not that the plant needs to, its roots to go so deep, but you want the water to drain through. Automatic watering systems are a no-no for lavender. It's too much water too often. This will kill, water kills more lavender in St. Louis than cold does by far. So keep your plant out of the range of your automatic watering system if you've had trouble before. Overwatering kills more plants, as I said. This is a result, this is my lavender a few years ago uh, as a result of being overwatered. Now, it wasn't me that was overwatering. It was that we had like 10 days of rain and no matter how well drained the soil was. Now these plants both came back. I was able to trim away these, uh, this dead stuff, but I have lost lavender just to too much water from the sky, not from me. After the plant's well established, it almost needs no, it almost never needs water, except in the hottest, driest weather. Again, room to grow. A perennial, lavender takes some time to get established. It generally doesn't, most lavenders won't even bloom until their second year of growth. So don't, you have to be a little patient with lavender, but it will reward you in the end. Don't crowd it again. Again, it needs good air circulation and light, and then it will be very happy. 
You can grow lavender in containers, especially if you grow a smaller cultivar. The English lavenders are usually smaller than some of the others. And you can try smaller variety, mini blue and bandera and munstead, which is one of my favorites, are easy to grow in containers. Now, that being said, this pretty container here, this ceramic pot, is not gonna be suitable for lavender by itself. You have to have the bottom fourth of this pot should be free of dirt and maybe filled with gravel. You will almost always have to drill additional holes in the bottom of the container because one hole is not gonna be enough to let the water through. You can add gravel to the bottom of the pot and use light fluffy soil. The best soil should look and feel like chocolate cake. That color, that deep dark brown and loose and crumbly, that's the best. You don't have to have a ginormous pot. It'll tolerate some root crowding. If you have a huge pot and a little plant that will, the water will be held, the soil will hold too much moisture. Never use moisture retaining soil. That's great for many plants, but not for lavender. A lot of this stuff goes, this is the same kind of growing for rosemary as well. If you're growing in a container, you can feed it with some slow release fertilizer once a year, but very sparing. In the ground, I don't fertilize my lavender ever. You'll prune it lightly in the early spring. I'll show you some diagrams about that. Water only when the soil is dry down to an inch or two below the surface of the soil. And you might have to repot it every two or three years. Some of the plants just have a smaller growth pattern and you won't have to repot them, maybe ever. If you can, protect your plants from northern winter winds. This is at a lavender farm called Long Row and you can see the outer row had more wind damage than the inner rows. This is where my lavender does best. It never gets any direct water. I never water it. It's under an eave up here that shields it. Its face is south and it's next to my patio and the driveway. So really, it loves it here. This is a terrible picture <laughs> taken way too late, but you can see the, how the blooms were. This was Grosso. This is a big plant and um, it really likes it there. Now, this is that same Grosso plant after I've pruned it and shaped it a little bit. This was taken this past January. So it's doing just fine. If you use a container, don't put a saucer under the plant. Again, that's just holding water. You want the water to go through. You can use pot feet. Those are very adorable. Or they sell pot rings that you can buy at any of the big box stores. Now, when you plant, and this is essential, I love this picture. This shows exactly what our soil looks like here. It's clay. Clay is a lovely, very nutritious soil for many things. If it's a Midwestern native, it loves this clay soil. Lavender is not native to this area. It's native to the Mediterranean, which does not have clay soil. So you've got to get all that clay out. Remember clay, when it's braked, makes bricks. So that holds water. You want to dig a nice deep wide hole and get rid of all the clay. If you're buying your plant, this is what you usually have, a little plug. And this, this is true for any plant you buy. You want to tease out the roots. This is called pot bound. This is when the roots this plant has been in this little container for so long that the roots haven't had anywhere to go. You want to tease those out. You will not kill the plant if you do it gently, but this is essential. These little individual root hairs have got to make contact with the soil. So this, this teasing out is true for any pot, any plant that you put in the ground. You want to space your plants at least two feet apart. This is in France, by the way. And now you can mix your own soil and I just, you can do it in a trug or a wheelbarrow to blend if you want to. And if you do, here's a recipe. I think this is included in your handout. 
You make an equal mixture of part bone meal and composted soil, enough to more than fill the hole. And you wanna mound up the soil for better drainage. This is what I mean by chocolate cake. It's dark brown, almost black, and very loose and crumbly. A lot of organic material in there. This is great. You can add some garden lime for every two gallons, add a half a cup, mix it in real well. Or you can just purchase composted soil mix and that works equally well. Again, don't get the moisture retaining soil, just a garden compost blend will be fine. Now, if you're using a big pot, you don't have to fill the whole pot with dirt. In fact, this is where I use up some of my, the pots the plants came in. I've put them in here whole so you could see what they were, but I usually squish them. I stomp on them with my feet and crumble them up a little bit and put them in the bottom third or fourth of the container. This takes up space, but doesn't add weight. You don't want to stack them in there so it's not covering, it's covering all the holes. But again, this will allow the water to get out of there. I'm stressing that because it's so important. Now, you're going to fill your hole with your amended soil and then dig out the center for the plant to be fit in. Press it in firmly with your hands and the plant should be at the same soil depth that it was in the pot. So you're going to push it into the soil right up until where the leaves begin. At this point, you do water it in thoroughly. And after that, you're only going to water when the soil is dry down to an inch or two. Remember, lavender doesn't usually even bloom the first year. The whole first year is dedicated to root growth. So it'll begin to fill out and bloom in its second year and reach its full size in its third and fourth year. So look at the difference. This is single year, one year plants, new plants. This is what those same plants look like in a year. So don't be, you, you have to be patient with lavender. One plant alone can have hundreds of blooms. And this is what the difference is between second year and third year plants. After that, it's just rolling along on its own. Now, Spanish lavender, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit, is a different type of lavender. Uh, it's not hardy in St. Louis. It will not withstand our winters. It's a tender lavender and is only good through zone seven, not zone six like we are. And I don't even know if we even match that this year with our cold. But it's really cute in a container. And it's, uh, it's characterized by these little, the different kind of flowers that it has. And it's very adorable. Now, if you harvest your flowers in the spring and the second and third years thereafter, you can do that. Um, and I'm going to show you even more. It's good to harvest the, the flowers. And if you do, you'll get a second bloom in the fall. This past year, I had three blooms. It bloomed again in late November because it was so mild. This is what the plant looked like before I harvested. And this is what it looks like afterwards. You're, when you harvest, you're sort of pruning the plant to shape it. Now, when you harvest, this is when you harvest lavender. The buds have formed, but the flowers have not yet fully opened. This is the best time to harvest, especially for drying purposes. Um, and if you wanna harvest the buds for cooking later, this is the time to harvest. This is a great picture, be sure that you are not cutting back to where the woody growth begins. You wanna leave at least two sets of leaves above the woody growth before you cut your lavender. If I cut it back down here, this stem will not regrow. You've, you've cut away everything that's gonna help the plant grow. So this is important. Leave several, I usually leave several pairs of leaves. This is another good picture. You can see how when I'm harvesting, I'm cutting some leaves that don't even have flower stems on them just to shape the plant and keep it nice and rounded, a mounded shape. This is best. It will get the most even sun and air circulation. 
you want to remove no more than a third of the plant at any one time. That's true for any, any plant that you're cutting. So here's my lavender. This picture was taken about a week ago. It's all pruned and ready. There's still a few little dead pieces on here. I'm going to wait to shape those till later. So I've got lavender here, here, and here. And this is right out in the open in a raised bed. This is pruning lavender in Giverny before and after. This was taken in early September. You can see that the flowers, they've just let them all uh, go. They didn't harvest it when the flowers were new. They're harvested, they kept the flowers out there for display. This is what it looks like afterwards. So you can see the difference. And they're just, again, this nice rounded, mounded shape. Now, how are you going to save your lavender? If it lasts so long, what do you do with it? Well, gather when you harvest, gather it into bundles and secure it with rubber bands. These rubber bands are not tight enough, really. You want to really put them on tight. As the plant dries, the stems will shrink a little bit. So just gather your bundles. It's a little handful. And then you can hang them and dry in a dark place for several weeks. Now, I, this is not my garage, but I have a wire in the back of my garage and I just do this exact thing. Leaving them in a dark place retain, helps retain the color and the plants, not just the flowers, but the, the leaves and everything retain their scent this way for, for months, years even. You can place, this says basil and oregano, but you can make little paper bags and you can punch holes or poke holes in bags and you can dry lavender this way. This is a good method if you want to later gather the buds for cooking, but be sure you label your bags. This is dried lavender that I have picked and it keeps its color and scent. This lavender is at least 10 years old. Now it's faded a little bit, but if I take some of this and rub it between my fingers, I still get that great scent of lavender. So it holds its color. You can pick lavender and just dry it right in the vase if you want to. That's what I did here. Now, lavender is, has, you have to have good drainage and you have to have full sun, but it's easy to grow and it's easy to propagate from cuttings. It's best to do this in the mid to late summer for propagation, the lavender plant does need some uh, humidity. Well, that's not a problem here in August. So you can do that in late July to early August using a sharp knife, not a scissors. Sharp knife makes a better, straighter cut. Cut a straight piece of stem with no flower buds. That's important. So you're gonna cut from the top of the plant when it's not blooming. And then you remove the bottom third of the leaves. You can do this with your fingers or a sharp pair of clippers. This is essential also. So then you're left with these nice stems with many pairs of leaves up at the top. And then you can dip those roots, those stems and rooting hormone, but I never do. I just plant it straight into a pot of good whale draining soil that's moist. You poke the cutting into the soil right up to the remaining leaves and pack it in so it stands up on its own. If you want to have a little mini greenhouse, you can cover it with a plastic bag, but you probably don't need that here if you're doing this in St. Louis. Now, it can take several weeks for the roots to form and be large enough to transplant, but you'll know when it's big enough because you'll be getting some new leaf growth up here. Then you can transplant it into a larger pot or into the ground. But these, I've done this before in beginning of August, and kept these all winter in this little size, maybe four inch, five inch pot. And they've been fine for, till the next spring inside my south facing, inside my house in a south facing window. You can make crafts with lavender, lots of crafts. These are lavender wands, sleep masks, coat hangers. You can see the lavender at the bottom and bath salts are just some of the many. If you take dried lavender, fill up bags with dried lavender, linen or muslin or cotton or whatever you've got. It's a natural moth repellent. So pack these in with your woolen sweaters when you put them away. I keep a few of these in the closet and every now and again, I just rub them between my hands and that re-releases the essential oil. 
smells much better and is just as effective as mothballs. Here are just some of the hundreds of shops in Provence where they sell lavender products. Of course, Provence is famous for lavender. So you can get any, any kind of anything made of lavender here. Dried lavender is easily available from ordering. I get from San Francisco Herb Company, but you can buy it locally. You can fill little bags with it. You can make sachets and coat hangers, trivets. I made these one year for my friends. Um, if you put your teacup, a hot teacup on this little trivet, it will release the scent. So that's kind of fun. But my favorite thing to do with lavender when I harvest it is make lavender wreaths. And this is just one of them. I make them every year. And it's not hard if you have, but you have to have a lot of lavender. I just buy a, a, either a grapevine or a wireframe wreath at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Attach some floral paddle wire available at those same places. And you never cut this until you're finished with the whole wreath making. I gather all my stems and trim the bundles all to about the same length. I usually trim when I'm holding it and the flowers start here, I usually trim to just about there. You take one bunch and you wrap the, wrap the wire around it, starting about a third from the bottom, wrap a few times around, and then you put the next layer over it and wrap a few times around and keep going and going and going all the way around. So you can see I've continued around the frame. This is what it looks like from the back. You can see all the ugly wires, but they're just overlapping. And I have various kinds of lavender with different color flowers, the real deep purple, the very pale, some is almost white. I like that mixture. And here's a finished roof. This was made, this, a friend of mine, her 10 year old son came over and wanted to make one. So it wasn't quite as full as I would have made it myself, but you can see how it, how it ends up. And if a 10 year old can do it, you can do it too. Now, what are the kinds of lavender? The family is Laminaceae, the genus is Lavandula, and there's several species of lavender. Lavandula angustifolia is what I've been talking about. This is English lavender, known as English lavender. Then there's latifolia, or spike lavender. A cross between these two is called intermedia. These are sterile. If you want to buy an intermediate lavender, you have to purchase a plant, a seed. You cannot grow this from seed. But this is one, Twickle Purple, Angustifolia, and Grosso, Intermedia. I grow both of those. Lavandula means to wash, lavare. Angustifolia means narrow leafed. And this is what I like to grow for cooking. They have the most sweetly scented flowers. They taste sweeter too, and they're best for culinary use. So they have a little less camphor. They bloom fairly early, and they're often smaller, more compact plants. So these English lavenders will be more suitable for container growing. Traditionally used for culinary and aromatherapy. You can have different colors flowers, and they're the most cold hardy. There are over 40 cultivars or kinds of English lavenders, so you have a wide variety of choices. Some that I like a lot are elegance, and that's how they spell it, elegance. Purple, very pretty one. Hidcoat blue is one of my favorites, smaller. Hidcoat pink. You can see here that like these buds, this is when this would be harvested. These are a little more open. You can still harvest them, of course, but if you want for cooking purposes, you'd harvest it when it's budded, just budded. This is Melissa. It's almost white. It's a pinkish white color. Munstead, this is probably my personal favorite. It's a fairly compact plant. It's got beautiful, deep purple flowers. And it's just heavenly smelling. Munstead is a great plant, easily available at any nursery. Twickle Purple has a lighter lavender color, and but it's a nice one too. It's this is the correct spelling. It's named after a castle. Twickle Castle. 
This is Vera. This is in a container in my garden. It likes the container. Again, it's a little bit paler in lavender color, but it does very well here. Thumbelina is a tiny little one, great for containers. And Jean Davis is almost pure white. Some other popular ones are Betty Blue and here's Elegance Pink. These are hardy, but they don't like our humidity. So remember, do not overwater these plants. That will kill them. Now, spiked lavender thrives in lower altitudes. The leaves are often have a, the flowers are a little more gray in color. I don't grow any of this by itself because I like the um, cross, but it has high levels of cineol, which is found in camphor essential oils. The cross, Lavandula ex intermedia, or French lavender, is a cross between the English and the spike. The seeds are sterile, but they're very robust plants. They adapt readily to different climate conditions and they tend to tolerate our high humidity. If you don't care about cooking with lavender, you can easily grow some of these intermedias. Um, and they're, again, widely available. They have a lot of essential oils, up to 10 times that of the angustifolias. So, that's why they that's why they bred them. And here's some of them. And I'm going to show you individual pictures of all these. Dilly dilly. I love that. You know the old lavenders blue dilly dilly. So these are the intermedia cultivars or French lavenders. Here's dilly dilly. They tend to be a little larger. Here's seal. It's a it's a kind of a lighter pinkish purple flower. This is the perfect time to harvest for buds. Dutch mill and phenomenal. Phenomenal is, has been grown here in St. Louis for a few years now, and it tends to tolerate our winters very well. So uh, that's one to try and it's available more and more. Edelweiss is almost pure white, very pretty. I don't grow this one personally, but my friends do. Grosso, I do have Grosso. This is a huge plant and the stems are royally long. This is somewhere in France. Provence is popular, very popular, and it also comes in white. Lovely. Other lavenders, these are generally not hardy, not here in St. Louis, but there are other lavenders. There's Dentata. This is a fringed lavender. You can see why it's named that because the leaves kind of look fringy. Fern leaf lavender, again, look at the difference in the leaves. It's very pretty but it's not hardy. And um, so if you wanna treat it as an annual, that's fine. It's not as available around here as some of the others. Here are some of these Spanish lavenders though. I do usually have one or two of these in pots. Again, they're not usually hardy, but I think they're so adorable that I grow them. So there's Q Red. We had this for sale a couple of years ago at our sale. There's a yellow lavender, Lavendula Stoke. I don't even know how to pronounce it. This is butterfly lavender. And you can see why it's called butterfly lavender. These are the berries, blue boysenberry and sugarberry ruffles. They're just really cute. Bandera purple we sold a couple years ago. I think the one we had this year was Regal Splendor. So they all have this characteristic top of their bloom. You can cook with lavender. This is our signature recipe, lavender tea cookies. You use the uh, little buds and you can buy lavender at Penzi's. Sometimes you can find it at the grocery store, dried lavender buds if you don't grow your own. You can make lavender filled cupcakes. And again, the English lavenders have the best, sweetest flavor. People make conserves and jams and jellies. Remember Queen Elizabeth who wanted her conserve. I've made lavender jelly. You make a simple syrup and with lavender honey, you just put a few, two or three of these bud stalks directly in the honey, leave it there for six or eight weeks, then remove the stems 
and uh, you have lavender, a little faint scent of lavender in your honey. It's really delicious. You can use it for chicken. I'm making you hungry now. Lavender lime scones. You can use it for savory things too. Jasmine rice, lavender pecans, lavender filled dates. This is a recipe in our cookbook that's so easy. Takes a tablespoon of lavender buds, mix it with cream cheese, fill the stuff, uh, stuff the date with it, the pitted date, and then roll it in some sugar and it's done. It's a wonderful little appetizer. Using a simple syrup, you can make ice cream or lemonade or sorbet. Now for more information, you can visit our website, uh, stlouisherbsociety.org. If you forget that, just Google St. Louis Herb Society. This is a photo of our Urban Heirloom Tuesdays, which we hope to get back to. And again, in normal times, we work from eight to 10 on Tuesday mornings. And then from 10 to noon, we have Urban Heirloom Tuesday, where we give away the free herb plant along with the recipe if it's a culinary herb or growing information about uh, using that herb. And they're nice sized plants too. So when we get back to that, I hope you'll come and see us down there. I'm part of our speakers bureau, so we can provide groups with talks, different talks as well. And we have our classes. This year's taking place on May 11th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. You'll get a handout with lots of recipes and other ideas for planting and uh, growing herbs that you can use for picnic foods. You register for this class, you do have to pay for it. It's registered through the Missouri Botanical Gardens website at mobot.org. This is all in your handout as well. So I hope you enjoy your lavender. I really love it and um, hope I covered some things. I'm gonna stop my share. I'm gonna open the chat room and see if we have some questions, which I'll take. Can you we plant do. lavender and Miss Kim lilac bush together? Well, you can plant anything together as long as they have to, as they have the same watering needs and you leave plenty of space. Um, both of those plants are big, so I wouldn't plant them right next to each other, you know, a foot away, but you certainly could. Making sure that your lavender is in full sun though, it's not shaded by your lilac. Do you keep stem soils moist while rooting them rather than waiting for one to two inch dryness? I keep the soil moist, just damp, I would say, for the first week or two, and then I stop until the soil is dry. Um, so I'm, I'm ready for any other questions that you may have. You can type them into the chat room or you can unmute and just ask if you want to do that. Yeah, if anyone has a question, now is a great time. Because yeah, we have lots of time. I, I kind of went fast through that. I'm sorry. I hope I hope I can go back to any picture that you want to see again if you need to. No, that was fantastic. I learned a lot about lavender. Is Munstead good for planters? Yes, it's good for a container. I would plant it by itself because, again, you want to keep the watering needs together. This is when you're planting container plants, if you keep the Mediterranean herbs together, that's lavender, rosemary, sage, thyme, oregano, marjoram, those, none of those need a lot of water, as opposed to basil, parsley, cilantro. If you plant basil with lavender, you're going to kill one or the other. You're either going to not give basil enough water, or you're going to overwater the lavender. So for... Um, Good for planters, yes, as long as they have great drainage. If you want to use a beautiful ceramic pot, put a plastic pot with lots of holes on top of a little bit of gravel inside that ceramic pot. Then you'll get the drainage you need and still have the pretty, pretty pot to look at. I'm on the website. Are all the recipes available online or in book form? A lot of those recipes come from our cookbook and others I just got from the web so yes they would be available uh, online and the book you can order the any of our publications are available through our website too okay any other questions we also have your cookbooks here at the library that's right so 
Do you have Feel it? Handy? I'll get it. I'll get it to hold it up. Sure. If you search the St. Louis Public Library's um, website for St. Louis Herb Society, all of the books that the library has by the Herb Society will pop up. And Herb Society Cookery is just one, and it's pretty fantastic. But we also have Cooking with Herbs. Hold that back. Almost. Wait, I'm going to get rid of my. I'm going to get rid of my screen. Okay. Let me get rid of this so you can see. Now there's Herbal Cookery. That's the one. This is it. It's a beautiful book. It has wonderful recipes of every kind, and um, we tested each recipe three times at least. Sorry about the glare. <laughs> That's better. Um, one, another great thing about the cookbook is it stays open when you when you are trying to use a recipe, which is great. Also, the recipes are indexed by, I mean, the index is by herb and by the recipe. So if you grow basil, you can find a lot of, a lot of uh, other recipes besides pesto in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, let me get rid of this. So I'm on the site, any other questions? Okay. Well, Mary, yes. Miss Mary Hammer, thank you so much. She will be back. She will be back. She is coming back on Tuesday, May the 4th for another program, The Lore and Legends of Herbs. Oh, yes. You can still sign up for on the events page at the St. Louis Public Library. And there are a couple of more questions coming in. Yeah, I see those. <clears throat> Please name the Mediterranean herbs again. And again, if you, if you forget this, you can just look up Mediterranean herbs. The common herbs are rosemary, lavender, thyme, marjoram and oregano, which are in the same family, and sage also. And Mediterranean climate is hot in the summer and cold in the winter, but there's not, it's very low in humidity. And that's the difference. <laughs> so, um, and the soils are not very rich. So these plants are kind of used to a little bit of struggle and not a lot of water, but they also have developed hardiness to withstand the winters and the hot summers. So those are the common Mediterranean herbs that we're most um, familiar with, I think. Uh, where would I recommend to shop for lavender? Okay, well, our sale is over. We sold out within a day and a half or two days with 10,000 plants. So um, hopefully we'll be in person next year. We do have a lot of lavender at those sales. However, over the last 15 years, I've noticed that's how long I've been in the Herb Society. Every year, local nurseries get more and more variety of herbs in their, uh, in their stock. In fact, we, we, for our sale, we have four local growers who grow our herbs for us. And of course, they sell to other nurseries around. I would say that any local nursery is going to have some lavender for sale. The box stores might have lavender for sale too. I mean, Bonnie's herbs, you know, grows a lot of plants. But a nursery will usually have a better label and a little more information about them. Um, I, I don't have any special nursery to recommend. I've been to many of them. It depends on where you live. Uh, there's Bowwood Farms. It's in the city on Olive they grow their own plants there and they have a lovely selection of herbs. Um, B-O-W-O-O-D, I think it's on Olive Street. Um, that's in the city. Um, I'm in the county, so I shop at Hartke Nursery and Garden Heights Nursery. There's several nurseries around the Kirkwood area. Uh, just look for a local nursery. They also will have, almost every nursery has their own compost soil mixture. And that's what I get from my nursery. So it's usually not terribly expensive. And that's a good place to find a lot of plants. The nurseries also have a better selection of all kinds of other things. You can find lots of different basils that you wouldn't find at um, 
at you know Lowe's or or some or uh, Home Depot, even though they do have plants and they're perfectly fine. Again, any plant that you buy, when you take it out, if those roots are really tightly in there, you've got to tease those roots. That's a big mistake that a lot of beginners make is just they plunk that thing in there and those roots don't have a chance to spread out. Let's see. Uh, okay. Well, if there aren't any more questions, then it doesn't look like we're set. Thanks well, everybody okay. for coming. Mary, thank you so much. I will see you in May. Oh, yes. Here's one last question. Plastic pots, okay. Yes, I don't use clay pots much anymore, even though clay pots are very suitable for lavender because the moisture can be, uh, can dissipate out through the clay. Uh, I don't use them because they tend to break, but you certainly can. I use plastic pots also. Again, you're gonna to have to drill like 15 holes in the bottom of it. I'm not kidding. You have to drill a lot more holes in the bottom of a plastic pot than it comes with. And that will help you. Okay, I'll see you in May, Erica. I will see you in May. Thank you yeah, so much. that's great. Okay, bye everybody. everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, you too.